hey girl welcome back to the channel i am in my kitchen and this video is very impromptu but i felt it in my heart to talk about the no oil and butter thing <laughs> it's been a while since we talked about it girl today i want to do a compare and contrast of the no oil and butter thing i feel like i'm back to calling it that but honestly what the hell do we call it we need a name we need a name and if we don't have a name i'm gonna call it the no oil and butter thing now like I said, this video is impromptu. I probably should have written some notes to keep my thoughts organized because who wants to hear me ramble about it? So, you know what, actually, let's write some notes. And now you're probably like, oh my gosh, Jen, why are you so greasy? Well, I like to think that I'm moisturized, first of all. But you know what? I don't like to apologize for my appearance anymore. I'm just at home and I'm chilling. And I thought of this video idea. I actually think it'll be a good little conversation. So here we are. So no oil versus oil. What did they have in common? They actually have a lot in common, you know? That's what I've noticed over the past year that I've been doing this. First of all, consistency is still key. If you're gonna ditch your oil and think that not using oils is going to fix all of your hair problems and you don't need to be consistent, you lie to yourself, okay? You are playing yourself. You still need to be very consistent with your hair care routine. You still need to wash, condition, and whatever you do, you still gotta do it on a consistent basis. They both have that in common. Consistency is still key. Good hair practices are still a thing. Huh. If you think you're gonna drop your oils, okay, and not tie your hair at night, not detangle your hair regularly, not be gentle when you're detangling your hair, okay, now that's key, that's important, then you're playing yourself. Just don't, don't even do, don't do it. <laughs> Why are you doing this if you don't want to take care of your hair? Regardless of oil or no oil, you still need to take care of your hair. And honestly, caring for your hair is what's going to make it grow or that's how you're going to retain your length so good hair care practices they're still around they haven't left by the way i'm actually cooking dinner it's like 10 it's 10 30 and i'm just getting dinner started <laughs> and let me tell you something um it's not gonna be one of those dinners you know that tastes good that just three course meal no this is just to keep us alive because baby i'm tired okay i'm tired i want to make it basic and it's only me holding down the fort. I guess I have to. All right, so the third thing that this whole no oil and oil situation have in common is that you still need to trim your hair, okay? It's inevitable that your ends are going to get damaged by wear and tear by you just taking care of your hair. That's just part of life, girl, and you need to cut them off. Some of y'all have real long hair, but it is damaged as <laughs> Ooh, language, <laughs> Jennifer, language. <laughs> it's true. Y'all don't want to trim your hair because you want your hair to grow down to your butt. I get it. But a little maintenance cut is going to do you good. Okay, at the very least, you still got to trim your hair. So both methods have trimming in common. Trimming is still important and you still need to trim your hair. So if you're not doing that, then I don't know what you're doing. I'm drinking coconut water, by the way. This is not apple juice. We actually have basically almost given up on apple juice. I only drink socially now, and it's crazy to me because <laughs> I used to enjoy a nice cocktail or two, you know, at noon. <laughs> Contrast between using oils and not using oils. I just talked about how consistency is one of the things that they have in common. Consistency actually looks different between the two methods. And what do I mean by that? When it comes to your oils, I really feel like it's lenient a little bit. You can get away with a lot, okay? And we do. We can wash our hair bi-weekly. Some of us actually stretch our hair and wash them every three weeks, every month. 
you i think you can get away with that especially if your hair is heavily coated with oils because let's face it oils are a lubricant so it's gonna form this nice coating on your hair and allow your hair to slide by one another it's beneficial if you're not washing your hair regularly if you're not putting water on your hair but regularly i think it actually prevents your hair from getting extremely dry to the point of breakage okay that's a thing we talk about how our hair can be dry but our hair can be dry and uncoated and that's the danger when you're not using oils i find the coating is something that we want to get rid of sure but if you don't have a coating then you need to be even more consistent with your routine you can't afford to not wash your hair every week <laughs> basically that's what i've noticed it's honestly better when you wash your hair more frequently so every four to five days if anything i would say five days is the sweet spot because it makes detangling even easier but if you're stretching it detangling is a nightmare and your hair is actually going to get dry to the point of breakage so consistency looks different between the two methods even though consistency is still key i hope that made sense the other thing that they don't have in common is the fact that you don't need to deep condition your hair especially as frequently as you know as we used to personally i was like a weekly deep conditioner i would do it all the time every time i washed my hair basically I would deep condition and if I did not wash my hair weekly then I would deep condition bi-weekly either way I would do it and when you're not using oils or raw oils I find that you don't really have to because you're consistently and intentionally putting water on your hair so you don't actually have to deep condition I hope that made sense that's what I've noticed at least okay all right what else is different you are using a gel for example versus your raw oils, your butters, etc. So you've basically replaced your oils and butters with a gel slash a mousse. So essentially you're still coating your hair with something. You're still trapping the water in your hair after you wash and condition, but you're just using different things to do it. Instead of using raw oils and butters, you know, you're using products with humectants such as a gel or a mousse or whatever, depending on the style that you want to do, to trap the moisture or to hold water in your hair. So the goal is still to keep water within our strands. You're just using different things to do it. And maybe something is a little more efficient than the other thing, but I think that's up to you to decide. And the biggest difference is that you're not using raw oils and butters. That's kind of obvious, but I felt like I really wanted to include this point because you're still using oils. There's oils most likely in your shampoo, in your conditioner, in your leave-in conditioner, in the gel that you're using, in the mousse that you choose to use. There is most likely oils in every product that you use. And that's kind of the main conversation around not using raw oils is the fact that we were using a lot of it. Let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> okay, let's be honest with ourselves. Because I know for me, girl, I would have oils dripping behind my ears, on my pillows, wherever I went, oils followed. <laughs> okay? And you know, I was doing a little too much. So basically, this whole method is about staying away from using so much raw oils in our hair and thinking that it's doing what it's actually not doing say that in a bad way because oils did serve us well that's the thing we don't need to be bashing oils because i feel like oils are actually important part of hair care and skincare products they are it's just how much we're using and how are we using it that's basically what i think the conversation comes down to but the biggest difference between the two methods is that you're not using raw oils anymore but oils are still present within your products, okay? Now, let me go ahead and fry my shrimps and I'll be back. So now the real question, does this method work for 4C hair? And honestly, I can't be the one to speak on that. And what I mean by work, can you use this method to grow long 4C hair? Because that's what everyone cares about, okay? You wanna know if you can grow your hair. No matter what the state, can it grow? And I can't be the one to speak on that because 
Shortly after starting this method, I went ahead and dyed my hair. And ever since I dyed it, the texture of my hair just has not felt the same. And it's been stripping the joy that I feel when I handle my hair so I don't. And I've been ignoring my hair. I've actually been ignoring my hair for a while. I really have not given this method a fair shot yet. My hair has been in this braids for two weeks has not seen an ounce of water. <laughs> so I've been over it. I have. I'll be the first one to tell you, girl, because you know I can't lie to you. And I already know, I already know. I know what I'm doing to my hair. Uh, so yeah, um, I can't be the one to speak on that. But I think it's actually going to make for some great content when I do decide to start taking care of my hair and taking care of my hair properly. It'll be interesting to see how my hair grows without using oils. Anyway, so to wrap this video up, the methods are actually very similar. The way that you take care of your hair is very similar. It's hard for us to process the fact that we're not using raw oils just because we're so used to it. You still need to be consistent. You still need to use a lot of water when you're taking care of your hair. You still need to be gentle when taking care of your hair. You still need to tie your hair at night. You still need to trim your ends. So basically the methods are basically the same. There is a lot in common, but the biggest difference is that you're swapping out raw oils or butters for a custard or a gel or mousse and you're doing a whole lot of wash and goes. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to have my dinner. Let me know how you feel about these two methods. You know, would you ever try it? Have you tried it? If you have, how long have you been doing it? And how's your hair going? Are you, have you been able to retain length with this method? I have a lot of questions. So leave a comment down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.